Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and it is Saturday which means it is time for another Inspired Saturdays collaboration here on my YouTube channel. I hope that you'll stick around, see who inspired me this week and find out how you can go see how I inspired her. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe even ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. If you're new to my channel or new to Inspired Saturdays, this is a collaboration that I host here on YouTube and I try to come about every Saturday team up with another crafty YouTuber so we can be inspired by each other. In my video, I'll be creating a project that was inspired in some way by the other creator, and then she has a video on her YouTube channel today as well where she has created something inspired by me. One of the funnest things about this series is that the inspiration pieces are kept a surprise until the day that our videos go live, so our viewers and us find out at the same time what project inspired the other one. Now if you're a crafty YouTuber and you would like to apply to join me, I do have a link in the description box below to the video with details and that has the link for the application. Please do keep in mind that I might mention the fall of 2020 in that video, but you can just apply that to the first quarter of 2021. Now the application itself should be updated with the correct dates. Today, I am teaming up with Toby of the Biddy Penny channel. If you don't already subscribe to her here on YouTube or follow her on Instagram, I hope that you'll do that when you're done here. I do have her links below, as well as the link to the video that I'm taking inspiration from today. Up on screen here is a look at the four beautiful cards she made with some Spellbinders floral dies. This is the video I'll be taking inspiration from, and it will also be linked in that description box below. Don't forget, when you're done with my video today, to go see what Toby created. It is linked at the very top of the description box. But what I especially like and what I'll be taking inspiration from today is that embossed background. She just has these beautiful embossing folders. I will be using a little bit more plain, but I love that she inked just a little bit on that. And then I love that ink focal point with the kind of white sketchy dye or the white outline. Now I won't be doing florals today. I didn't have anything that was exactly like that, but I will be using some Spellbinders dies. I used to subscribe to the Small Die of the Month kit with Spellbinders, and I have so many that I haven't used, and when I was going through my dies for today, I knew that this was the set that I wanted to use. It has like a circle in the background that you can cut, but then it also has more detailed or outlined dies. I will be using the one down here on the bottom left. It looks like a rainbow on top, and at the bottom, they're kind of like triangles, but if you look not too hard, they could almost be hearts. I thought that would make a fun topper or that white layer. Behind that, I'm going to ink in rainbow colors to go with the die cut rainbow. For my inks, I chose a rainbow from Gina K Designs. Now this is a little bit of an alternative rainbow. It's more bright colors, but I thought that would be fun for the card. I have Passionate Pink, Tangerine Twist, Wild Dandelion, Lucky Clover, Blue Lagoon, and Wild Lilac. Because my area that I have to link is going to be pretty small, I did get out the littlest blending brush I have. Normally I try to keep color families with their own brush, but I do only have one of these so I'll just clean it between. This brush actually came from the Dollar Tree. Um, they have different sizes there. I just thought this was a good size for my project today. In addition to the Spellbinders kit dies. I also got out some of my nesting circle dies from Spellbinders. I believe this is the Nestabilities Circle Small. 
For my embossing, I chose this Doris Chevron embossing folder. And for my sentiment, I'm going to choose one from this Simon Says Stamp Just Miss You stamp set. This came in one of their card kits that I purchased. And right now I'm not sure which sentiment I'll use, but keep watching and you'll find out. Once I start the video, I will go to a voiceover and I will let you know any other products that I bring in. Now, if I do leave you with any questions, as always, feel free to leave those in the comments section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! For the piece I'm going to blend on today, I did get out a scrap of Strathmore Bristol Smooth. This I just find takes the inks the best. Off camera, I cut a square of white cardstock for my die cut rainbow piece, and I cut another piece of white cardstock to four by five and a quarter. This will be my embossed piece. I just rough cut a circle around the circle that I chose for my blending, and then I'm going to run all of these through the cuddle bug. Once all of the die cutting was done, it was time to do the blending. I brought in a paper towel to clean my brush off with, and I am protecting my surface with a clear cutting board. Now my plan is to start with the two colors that would be in the middle of the circle, which are yellow and green. I will blend those two and then blend out from there in rainbow order. Now I did speed this up quite a bit because I don't think I have any real rhyme or reason for this. I just kind of blended. I tried to come in from the sides, but I didn't always do that. If I found some places where maybe I got the color darker, I did try to bring some more of that color in. And you'll see here that after I put down the pink, I decide that I don't have enough yellow or it wasn't bold enough. So I did bring that yellow back in and add some more. Once I have the colors laid down, I did do a little bit of blending in between the colors that touched. At the bottom, got a little crazy with the blue and the purple, so I did have to go back up to that top and make that pink a little darker. Now they look a little splotchy on the video. It did settle down just a little bit, but again, this was mainly going to be hidden behind that die cut piece. I just wanted some color. Because the die cut rainbow did have some delicate pieces to it, I brought in my art glitter glue with that fine tip applicator. Now, if you're interested in finding out more about that little beaded charm stopper, let me tell you, this keeps me from losing that pin all of the time. I will link the video below where the crafty YouTuber tells you how you can order it. While I add the glue to the back of the die cut piece, I thought it would be a great time for the QOTV or the question of the video. If I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. I have so enjoyed getting to hear and see all of your answers. Today's question is, what is your favorite adhesive for paper crafting? Let me know in the comment section below. You can tell me one favorite, you can tell me two, whatever you would like to share. Just don't forget to include the hashtag, hashtag QOTV, so I know that you've answered the question and you would like me to see your answer. My number one adhesive has to be my ATG, which is the big pink adhesive roller thing you'll see me use here in just a little bit. But I do have to say that this art glitter glue is very quickly and easily becoming my second favorite adhesive. While that's drying, we'll do some stamping. I brought in my Misty Detail White Embossing Powder, Versamark, and my Embossing Buddy. I decided for my sentiments, I would use on the front, consider this a paper hug, and on the inside, I wanted to use a finer one, and it says, can't wait to give you a real hug, hopefully soon. 
I decided that I wanted my sentiment to really stand out, so I will be stamping this and embossing it in white onto black cardstock. Off camera, I cut a little strip that was five and a half inches wide by three quarters inches tall. I will treat this with my embossing buddy. This just helps ensure that the powder only sticks to where I want it to. Once I have my stamp set up nicely where I think it will go, I pick that up with the door of my Misty, ink it up, and then stamp it onto the cardstock. I pull in my tidy tray so I can catch all that powder, and then I bring in my heat tool to heat set that. For the inside sentiment, of course, white embossing won't work, so I brought in my VersaFine Onyx Black. This is my favorite ink for sentiments. I just think that it catches all of the details and it dries rather quickly. Once I have that sentiment on the door of my Misty, you might have noticed that I did use the etched grid lines to make sure it was straight across. When I inked this up and stamped it, I didn't press super hard because I just wanted a nice crisp sentiment and you can always press harder later. But this one turned out pretty nice on the first try. For a little more decoration on my sentiment strip, I brought in my Stampin' Up! Pick a Banners Punch and I will be using the fishtail end on this. I did flip my tag over or my strip over and I watched where I punched from the bottom. I just wanted to ensure that none of the sentiment would get punched off. My rainbow was now dry so we could start putting the card together. Off camera, I cut a piece of black cardstock that would be just a small mat around my embossed piece. I did this for a couple reasons. First of all, it's going to bring in the fishtail banner, and also the white cardstock from my embossed piece is a little bit brighter white than the cardstock for my base piece. So, this kind of helps to break this up and make that less noticeable. These two pieces got layered together and then placed onto the card front. Next, I figured out where I wanted my sentiment strip on my card front, and I did need to trim a little bit off the left, so I marked that with my fingernail, brought in my little Fiskars bypass trimmer, and sliced that off. This piece got adhered flat down to the card front as well. And then for some extra dimension, I brought in some Stampin' Up! Dimensionals and added five of these to the back of my rainbow and then placed that onto the card front. And finally, to finish this card off, I brought in some clear dew drops that I got on Amazon and I'm going to place some of these on the card front. Now I will tell you that arranging five of these like I wanted them on the card front was probably the most time consuming part of this entire card. I did really speed this up a lot, but it took me some time to figure out exactly where I wanted those. Once I had figured it out, I brought in my jewel picker and my art glitter glue once again, and I just slid the gems a little bit, put some glue underneath it, and then placed it back on there with that jewel picker. I did let these dry for about 10 minutes before I'm going to show you the close up of the finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I was inspired to create today's card. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Now don't forget to go see what Toby has created. Her link is at the very top of the description box below. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above, and if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.